So I'm very excited about tonight's uh, presentation. Um, uh, I've always said that uh, one of my favorite parts of doing the Antarctic trip and the Arctic trip, the polar regions, um, and on the ship, the Ortelius, was uh, just getting to meet such really cool people and finding out all their passion projects. Um, so I thought, what a better way um, to uh, bring the, to everybody's attention than to have them join us for our speaker series. So um, tonight I, I'm excited to share um, uh, what uh, Lou and Tiff are doing. But before I do, as you all know, I have a little bit of shock news to share. Um, uh, a reminder that this Saturday is our annual underwater pumpkin carving contest. Uh, this is my favorite event of the year. Uh, the weather at the quarry is supposed to be perfect. Uh, I can't guarantee this is great, but you're carving a pumpkin, so who cares? Um, and, um, and then, of course, the uh, lighting of the pumpkins. Uh, we, so for those of you that don't know, at the end of the day, we award all the prizes, and everybody is amazing, very creative. We, we just have some amazing pumpkin carvers. But at the end, we collect them all, we go up on the hill, and we have this big bonfire, and we pour gasoline, and all of the pumpkins, everybody that's willing to donate their pumpkins, fill them up with gasoline and light them all on fire. So um, uh, the burning of the pumpkins is really my favorite part of the evening. Uh, it's spectacular. So that event is this Saturday. Uh, we have uh, room for more. It includes lunch um, and your entry to the, to the uh, quarry and then a fun and fabulous uh, shirt. Can one of you grab me a t-shirt? I'm not sure where you've ended up. Uh, here's the box right here. We'll show you the shirt. So. Uh, again, lovely weather this weekend. Sometimes I get folks that uh, don't sign up until the last minute because they want to see the weather. So, uh, unlike our Florida, a state of Florida, let's all keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, we're expecting uh, good, good weather. Ooh. That's cute, but look at this one. It's an Aloha theme. Ooh. <laughs> ah, here, get a little closer. Ah, soak your. Oh, oh too oh, close. Too close, <laughs> too close, or something. You just killed it. That was weird. That was weird. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Camera freaked out. All right. Um, I also want to remind everybody, because we only have a few more uh, weekends of the season, right? And our last rescue diver course is at the end of this month, October 26th and 27th. Um, and you know how I feel about this, that all of us should be at that rescue diver level. Um, so... Uh, in addition, if you earn if you earn master if you earn rescue diver, you got to do open water, advanced, and rescue, five specialties, fifty log dives, and you earn your Patty Master Scuba Diver rating. And this year, right now, they are offering the um, they are waiving the membership fee, the, the the certification fee. It's like seventy five dollars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's significant. So um, now's the year to earn your Master Scuba Diver rating. And rescue traditionally tips most people right over the edge. And I, I want to encourage everybody to give that a consider. Uh, it is the hardest class you're going to take, but you will also end up feeling really proud of yourself. It is not a gimme class. You're going to earn every bit of it. And, um, and so I'm proud of those of you that have already earned your Master Scuba Diver. And I challenge those of you that have not yet earned it by finishing up Rescue Diver. All right, add to your calendar, please, November 9th. It is going to be the annual luau, our annual pig roast. Um, it's uh, our opportunity to thank everybody uh, for being loyal Waikiki um, customers and divers, uh, and we celebrate with uh, roasted pig. I don't know why, but um, uh, aloha. It's, a, it's an, a luau, an aloha way, so delish. So November 9th, and that's when we're going to launch our We Own Winter contest. Paul, we got to figure that part out. Yep. We're going to have all the details by then. Um, and then uh, Scuba Santa is December 7th. Um, to get your photo with Scuba Santa, all those proceeds, as a reminder, benefit the St. Louis Area Food Bank. Uh, so get your photo with Santa, kind of a fun little uh, picture to put up on Facebook, and you get to support uh, the area food bank. Uh, GoPro Night, this is where we gather everybody up and sort of help uh, our divers chart their path. So even if you're open water, you know, maybe what are the classes next? Advanced, rescue, that sort of thing. What is, what, how do you move up through the, through the PADI system? How do you chart your path? 
Maybe you're considering dive master, maybe you're considering that pro level of becoming an instructor, and that's the evening where we provide all the gory details. So um, it's just a social event. I'll feed you, I'll ply you with some alcoholic beverages, so please join us and we'll give you all those details. It's, um, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about the Master Scuba Diver program. That is going to be December 10th. Is that a Tuesday or a Thursday? I believe it's a Tuesday. It's a Saturday. Seven, it's, a Tuesday. it's a Tuesday. Tuesday evening, December uh, 10th here at Chesterfield. All right, um, travel. Uh, we've got a couple of openings. So let me review some of those that are coming up here uh, for Little Cayman. Uh, I actually got two more rooms, and so we have a pool view room still available for our little Cayman trip in January. Uh, the Riding Rock trip to the Bahamas, I have a female share left. That's in February. And let's see, Galapagos is sold out. Passport to Paradise, uh, this is, this is going to be to Indonesia, folks, and this is... Um, my rescheduled trip, I don't get to say this often, but we got canceled last year because of a volcano eruption. All right, so this is the reschedule from that trip, and I have a male share still available for that trip. We're going to make a stop in Singapore. Go check out Singapore for a couple of days. Um, and then um, the Arctic trip. So uh, that's on uh, the MV Ortelius. And um, it's going to be August 16th through the 30th. We're going to do um, we're going to do uh, visit the Spitsbergen. That's what I got to do this June. Go visit Spitsbergen. It's north of Norway. We're going to make our way across to Greenland and do some uh, some touring over in Greenland, and then uh, down to Iceland. Um, there is an Iceland um, extension uh, also available. But this trip is truly phenomenal. Once again. Uh, Faith Ortons with Blue Green Expeditions, the, the, um, the company that is uh, chartering this, this trip and putting the itinerary together, she gathers up the coolest people and finds all these scientists, um, uh, the, all of the, the, uh, the photographers and videographers of our industry, the top dogs, and you get to sit around at the bar and, and have a, 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 a beverage with them and visit and actually get to hear about their, their different projects. So not only is the outside um, scenery spectacular, polar bears and walruses and reindeer um, and then whales underwater, um, but and glaciers, right? Just the, 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 the overall experience is stunning and to see all of that for yourself uh, but the experience of being with um, all these other uh, talented individuals and um, scientists and their presentations, their, 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 their things, you really should, it's expensive, I know, but you really should add it to your schedule. Uh, it is just a spectacular trip. And you don't need to be a diver and you don't need to be a snorkeler. You could absolutely join and have a, just a, a, a great time um, and not dive. So. Um, and Miss Sarah G just signed on, but Sarah uh, uh, did diving with us in Antarctica. So uh, we will be doing some diving, but you don't. You could certainly do snorkeling instead or just pass on all of that and just ride on the Zodiac. So the Arctic trip, I have spots available August uh, 16th through the 30th. It's less than a year away now, and I'm excited to have uh, be on that trip. And then there's some others that you guys can check out. Um, I am still behind on getting a few flyers up, pushed up. I swear I'm going to get this done soon. So I just need a few more hours in my day um, to get this all done. So uh, without uh, further ado, I would like to go ahead and take this opportunity to um, introduce our guest speakers tonight. Uh, we are joined by Ms. Tiff, Tiff DeWong and Louise, Dr. Louise Edwards. And they are two of the ladies that we got to meet on our Antarctica trip in February. They actually met uh, on a trip to the Arctic, if I remember correctly. Yes, and um, as they were uh, snorkeling, um, they got to visiting and realizing that, boy, if we collaborate, the things we could do. And so they created uh, Three Otters Media and are doing some amazing projects with, uh, with virtual reality. So bringing that underwater exploration uh, to the masses. And we, we actually got to try it out on the Antarctica trip. I've got some fun pictures of us with, uh, 
with all of the, the mask on and the, and the, and the um, controllers. So without further ado, uh, please join me. Please give them a very big welcome from Waikiki here in St. Louis, Missouri, Tiff and Louise. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, ladies. Well, that was a very Thank lovely introduction, Valerie. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay. Uh, awesome. So I'm Tiff, and Lou is over there with the cool hair and the white background. And we are two of the three otters of Three Otters Media. We're really excited to see some familiar faces from Antarctica and to meet some new ones and to share with you a little bit about what we're doing by exploring through virtual reality. Next slide, please. So just a little introduction to who we are. Um, I am obviously talking to you guys, a scuba diver first and foremost, um, but I used to be a lawyer until my first live aboard trip to the Galapagos. I, I found myself crying on the bow of the boat and just being like, oh my God, it's so beautiful, life's so great. What am I doing being a lawyer in LA? And so I went back and I quit my job and I sold my house and I was like, all right, let's go team ocean. How do we do this? How do we help save the blue planet? And that was in 2015. And ever since then, I've done just about anything that sounds kind of weird and kooky that has to deal with the ocean. I have boycotted um, in a shark suit outside of Whole Foods against <laughs> unsustainable fish. I've done policy. I've done lobbying. I've done scientific diving, coral restoration. Um, and now uh, I'm an environmental reporter with a specialty in oceans. And I do cool VR stuff with Lou. Go ahead, Lou. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's, I'm having to keep everything uh, activated, different windows. So if I'm a bit slow on the uptake, it's because I haven't activated the window. Um, uh, so hi, I'm uh, Louise Edwards, but um, most people call me Lou uh, for brevity. Um, <laughs> and, um, or otter number two. And um, I, um, uh, come from a little bit of a different background from TIFF. So I started off as a volcano scientist. And this actually is a photo of me when I was way younger than I am now on the side of, uh, uh, inside of the volcanic crater of Al Chichan in Mexico. And the water behind me there is about 90 degrees Celsius, like the real temperature um, <laughs> measure. Um, actually, I should probably give it in Kelvin. Um, so it was pretty hot. And uh, this is one of my like uh, coolest thing that I used to do when I was younger. Um, but life kind of takes turns as it does. And um, I, I left academia after my PhD and, and went on a circuitous career path, which took in uh, climate change reporting and science, high school science teaching and um, various other things that have kind of um, all culminated in uh, discovering a love of uh, building video games in virtual reality and combining that with my desire to make, to enhance people's relationship with the planet. Um, and I start, first started to learn to dive in 2003 when I was a, a university student, um, but then became really terrestrial. Um, and I'm just kind of revisiting my scuba diving. And I'm very happy to say, Valerie, Rescue Diver is up on my list Yay! for next. It's in my training progression. Good job. Um, um, I'm applying for the Women Divers Hall of Fame mm. grant. Uh, to support me to do that. So I'm pretty, pretty stoked. And it's really nice to hear from you that this is a really good thing for me to do. It validates my choices. So thank you. <laughs> um, so um, uh, yeah, so just I live in the mountains here in, uh, in Canada, just outside Banff National Park. Um, so lots of cold water diving available nearby, just nothing in the oceans. Um, uh, and so why water? I spoken a little bit, I'm sure, to those of you who have met her about her magical moment in the Galapagos. 
and um, uh, how water saved her. And we'll talk about its per- its its personal impacts on us in a second. But it's also really important for us as a planet, right? So um, it, oceans cover seventy percent of our the surface of the Earth, like which is pretty significant and um uh, most of our population lives close to the oceans um life began there like th- almost four billion years ago and for most of the history of our life our, our planet until like less than 500 million years ago like it was only there um so really it is the crucible of life uh, is been is the oceans and the even currently uh, currents the currents in the oceans transport energy nutrients and a whole bunch of other chemicals that are required for the unique life that we see on our planet um our ocean organisms produce 50 percent of the planet's organism planet's oxygen although don't get too excited about that because they also use about 50 percent of the earth's oxygen the planet's oxygen so not of it much of it gets to us let's still protect our rainforests they're really important um uh, and it is home to 78 percent of all animal bio pa- biomass and sorry i get nerdy i'm a scientist um and over 90 percent of these little creatures called prokaryotes the bacteria those archaea those ones that have no nucleus the ones that really allow us to look back into how life on this planet began so really exciting places to be plus there's a whole bunch of volcanoes which is really really exciting and it also plays a huge role and this is really important when we're talking about the impacts of climate change and especially in polar regions the ocean is a is hugely important for the carbon cycle. It is the single biggest non-geological store of carbon. And so it there is 38,000 tons of carbon stored in the oceans compared to less than a thousand in the atmosphere. And even compared with 10,000 in fossil fuels, right? And we think of all of the carbon we can release if we burnt all of them, like, the oceans are so important when it comes to, to storing carbon. So there's just incredible stuff happening in the ocean that, bef- that before we kind of get into what we're doing, like really some of the big things that drive us to do that. But on a more personal note. <laughs> so the water keeps the planet alive, but it gives us life. Um, at Three Otters, we have this Venn diagram where Lou gives the context. Aya, who's not here, kind of gives the sensory input. She's like our sound person, our visuals person. So she's collecting, like she had a microphone in Antarctica uh, and she has all these other instruments to gather like the tech and the actual noises. And I'm the feelings person. So this is like my <laughs> sweet spot. I love talking about the ocean and I love talking about its impact on me and people like me. Um, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, right? You're all divers, you know, like the ocean is our playground, it's our home, it's our hope, it's where we love to be. And when you combine the context with the actual inputs, with the feelings, that's what we are creating at Three Otters Media and that's the experiences that we're building so that people who might never go there, who might not dive, who might not go to Antarctica can still feel and and see and understand the same things that we did physically being there. Mm. So next slide. So this is me about to be off the Zodiac. And this is in Norway where Lou and I met in 2022. And that's what cruised right under us. These are wild orca. And this was a snorkeling trip. It wasn't a dive trip, um, but it's one of the few places in the world um, that allow a swim with program. And you'll see these whales came really close. They were very curious. This is our friend, Ashley. You can hear she's <laughs> stoked out of her mind. Oh, yeah. She's just like on a high. People came up 
and they were crying in their masks. They, they got eyeballed by orcas. Um, I always told this story about how an orca came up to her, and when she leaned one way, the orca leaned that way, and then she leaned the other way, and the orca leaned that way. And it just really cemented for her how you could be seen by a species that wasn't human. So these ones were so close, I felt like I could touch it with my fin. That's incredible. Next slide, please. And so it was in these magical waters that three otters got our origin. This is actually the origin moment. So <laughs> here you'll see Lou is the one closer to us in the yellow mask, and that's Aya. And they were just feeling it. They, they, you know, we had had an amazing day of encounters with orcas and humpbacks, a few bait balls. And then they, they let us play in the water afterwards, and we were just floating in our dry suits, hanging out. And they decided to sit back like otters and raft and just hang out. Hmm. And I didn't quite get the memo, so I didn't raft with them, but I was bopping nearby. So I'm otter number three. I'm the <laughs> one that's always just a half step behind. But together, this is why we're called Three Otters Meet It, because of this exact moment, which we're so blessed that a photographer caught for us. Aww. And we are a immersive learning studio that, next slide. that creates digital worlds that give our physical one a fighting chance. Um, so you'll see here's just a, a mix, mix mash of real life versus digital life, right? Um, and the whole point of what we're doing here and in our work is kind of skirting that edge between reality as we know it, like what you can dive into physically and the reality that can exist in a headset and how both can feel the same, right? You can create an, an experience in the headset that creates that exact same feeling, the same change within you as diving into the water. So I think we all know in this call and we're lucky enough to have had these incredible experiences in nature, both under and over the water. Um, and that, that ex those experiences change us right and what we want to do is 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 bring that as close as we can to those people who can't experience it as much uh, as us and some other things that we'll talk about uh, later but um yeah as uh, we i kind of dragged them into this this vr world a little bit um and uh, as i I went to Norway with a very, very singular goal <laughs> to find a, a story and a team to build a VR experience uh, to <laughs> enter into a UN competition about the sustainable development goals, and specifically life below water. Um, and I really couldn't have imagined finding the team that I did to create this. And we came together and, and, and I, we say, quite often that we are more than the sum of our parts, which is part of the Venn diagram that uh, Tiff was talking about. And uh, we there's a certain alchemy that happens when we are together that um, really I could not have imagined. Um, and uh, on the back of that, yeah, we decided that we might, it might be fun to do, to keep doing this um, and, and try and uh, uh, keep going and spend some time together. Uh, but we're really about um, impact, right? Like we're not, we, we do want you to have a good time when we're, when you're in our games, but it's really, um, the goal for us is um, encouraging uh, people to have um, an impact and to be motivated to take effective uh, action. Um, and so in, in our games, everything is, we, all, we support our games with, with calls to action, tangible things that we can, we can do. So we're really trying to leverage that awe and wonder that we all experience when we're in the deep, deep in the ocean or in the mountains um, and use that as an environmental solution to have a positive impact. Um, and yeah, we do this and by boost. Oh, take it away. Good. I'll talk about the technical no, no, no. stuff. You this this is feelings. This is all you. 
<laughs> okay. So basically, we all know that like there's there's nothing compared to actually being there. But if you can't be there, whether that's financial, life obligations, physical limitations, whatever, VR can be the next best thing. And so we're creating natural environments within these headsets that are so immersive that they leverage the same natural amazement that people feel in nature uh, that helps them connect to these wild places and animals. And this boosts empathy, right? This makes you connect, mm -hmm. right? Jacques Cousteau said like when people, uh, they protect what they know they, or love and they love what they know and they know what they're taught. Right, and so for people who might never be able to go there, we bring the place to them. We bring the place to their headset, to their home, to their classroom. And we help create a connection that might not otherwise exist. And by doing so, we're helping to, we hope, create other ocean advocates who might come from you know, landlocked places and who might otherwise never have an interest or an ability to dive down with us. And so this, uh, next slide, please. And so this is really why we are doing VR for exploration, right? Um, here you'll see a, bit, a video, a real video on top from Norway again, and then our VR version on bottom. And you can really see how it can become a very immersive experience in the headset. You see the same island. We built the same island. We used real data points, real science, real geographic um, er inputs, everything, models, to create as realistic of a VR model as we could based on reality. And the cool thing about VR is that it's choose your own adventure, right? It's, it was hard, so I am super analog. Lou, is, Lou and Aya are very tech savvy, I am not. <laughs> and it was really hard for me to understand at the beginning when I started helping how VR is different, you know, than say just watching something. And it didn't click for me until I put a headset on where I was like, oh, I get full choice in the headset. I'm not watching something passively like a documentary. I am there with controllers in a headset and I get to choose if I want to go up and down, left and right. Um, and so it really is a choose your own adventure, much like any dive is, right? You get When you're in the water column, you get to choose every which way you go. You wanna go upside down? You can. You wanna do a flippy? You can. You know, all those things. And the same is true in VR, which is the only place I've ever felt that. Uh, and the last benefit I'll talk about before I pass it to Lou is that these, like, like you see here, VR helps us create what we call an echo. So you can pick all the parts of an expedition or a trip that you loved and you can recreate them and cement them in a way that a video and a photo can't get those details, those immersive details necessarily. Like we're augmenting all those other traditional medias and this echo allows you to relive what you've had, what you've experienced, and also to share it with you know friends and family who might not have been on the trip. I think Lou, you were in Antarctica, right? Christian, the photographer tried this game and he, he said something that was so beautiful. Do you mind sharing it? Yeah, so um, I think you all, pro well, those of you who are in Antarctica will um, uh, remember Christi Christian Demetrius, who actually I get to see in a week or so, because he's coming up to Calgary to do the Diescapes conference. I get to see Faith and other cool other people from Antarctica too. It's very exciting. But anyway, he, he if you remember his talk from the ship, those, those of you who are there. Yeah. He, he actually did a lot of videography in the fjords um, of Norway um, and um, uh, took photos of the carousel feeding. We'll show you a little bit of that in a bit. Um, and um, he put, when he put the headset on and he went through, he came up, he says, it just felt like I was there again. And it, you, you can, and, and the, he could tell that we had been there because we'd captured it in a way that was more than just based on photos, right? Like that, it had the feel of it, and that was that's really what we're trying to get, and what you get as a as a an enhancement of this this VR over anything else. It's it it has 
um, because you can have this multi-sensory experience where you're truly transported in, it allows you to re-experience and share these ineffable, exp these ineffable qualities of an experience that you can't communicate with words. I mean, how, how many times we can come up from a dive or come back from a, an expedition and, I mean, and just try to say, yeah, this is, this is but you just can't find the words. I mean, the, the Apollo astronauts would come back from Mar from from the moon, and they they really struggled to reintegrate into life because they couldn't find the words or the way and to to communicate that. And you get you know people could turn to art and other things to try and really capture this. And VR is really powerful for that. And not only can we recreate the environment fairly fairly accurately like as Tiff said we we had uh, we recorded sounds and we used the digital elevation models to um, uh, to make the terrain but we can also play around because we're generating all of this stuff with a computer this is all digitally created models that you know I build in a computer program we get to play around with that so we it doesn't have to be super realistic we can actually like the impressionist painters of um uh the 19th century we get to um present the present it in a way that's going to maximize that emotional impact and get you to feel in a way so we can really kind of play around and i don't want to say manipulate but essentially we're manipulating your emotions to get you into the place where you care maximally about this place um and to do and that helps us uh, by doing it in a way where we don't have to send people into potentially dangerous situations or expensive places uh, we can increase access and increase impact by making people feel really intensely and giving them a pathway to act. And it's also really fun. <laughs> okay, I would love to tell you guys a little bit about VR for storytelling by introducing you to Nora, who is the main player of our first game that we've been showing you bits of. She is a baby orca who is in the fjords of Norway for the first time learning from her mom and her grandma, her aunts, and um, a couple game guides how, how to orca, you know, how to eat, what they eat, how to survive, how to not get caught in a fishing net, what humans are. And you know the phrase like you don't know um, what, what it's like until you walk a mile in someone else's shoes. You don't know how to understand them, what they're actually going through. I, I leveraged this idea when I was writing the story for Found in the Fjords to maximize the impact, right? You, there's no way that we humans can empathize with an orca unless you become the orca, right? And I think that's really such a nice way to showcase one of the positive um abilities that VR storytelling gives us, right? In no real life reality can I say, you're gonna become a baby orca, but in virtual reality, I can make you anything. I could make you a mushroom, I could make you a scuba fin, I can make you a baby orca. And when you do that and you go through this and you talk to your mom and you talk about times that you're scared or you, you fail at learning a new skill and you keep trying until you get it, you come to understand that orcas are a lot like humans. And this was something that we learned on expedition. We learned about their cultures. We learned about how the moms choose to come to Norway at this time to eat the herring because they're extra fatty so that their milk is more nutritious for their babies. We saw mom orcas calling their babies back when they were getting too close to us because the babies were curious and the moms were protective. And so by putting players into this orca pod as an orca by having you swim in their fins we'll say you actually get to empathize right and we call this interspecies embodiment mm -hmm. and it's just one of the many storytelling tools that vr gives us access to um and then when i said earlier that vr is like an echo of reality the cool thing is that we kind of get to manipulate that echo because we're creating this whole world right everything you're watching here lou designed like I wrote it in a Google Doc, 
because I told you I'm super analog. And then I was like, please make it come alive and make it pretty. And she somehow created these things, right? We, she's got a comb jelly there because she saw those in the water in Norway and she just could not stop staring at them. And she made them bioluminous. And then I was obsessed with the sunset. So I was like, please make the skies sunset all the time. Like that, those <laughs> sunsets pierced my soul. I will never forget them. And I was like, I need those in our game. <laughs> Watching a bait ball is something that so many divers chase. And we got to see the remnants of some, but we got to create a, the full experience here. And you get to observe it, not as a human at the end, but as an orca watching her whole pod, you know, carousel feed, which is unique to these orca. And then having humpbacks come and steal your work, which is what actually happens in Norway. Mm. So for us, it was really, for me, especially as the storyteller, it was such an awesome um, challenge to make you think like an orca and make you care about what happens to them. And it really taught me a lot about how we can leverage this technology, especially within the ocean space where we have so many amazing and weird animals to really tell these stories and get people to care. Next slide. So here is a, we're going to share with you a little bit of a trailer that gives you an idea of the full game. Um, and just to uh, uh, build on what Tiff was saying there, uh, um, one of my favorite things to do that it was, I was the, it was the proudest thing I think that I put into the game. And it's the one that I hear most people say that they enjoy the most is um, like, you know how where you watch Orca from the surface, they're kind of surfing along. Um, and in the game, you can do that. You can, you can go the surface up and down and um, uh, just by moving your head up and down, like in a really intuitive motion. And that's another thing that we can do in VR that is difficult to do in other um, uh, kind of video game um, environments, uh, because essentially this is what we're building, is building video games that you can really interact with, but you feel like you're being, you're transported inside that television screen and you're actually there um, and you can actually surf and that's the funnest thing to do. So um, uh, hopefully you guys will get to experience at one day what it feels like to surf on the ocean like, like an orca. But here's our uh, trailer. Family is everything to Orca. Each one of us plays a different role, but we all help to keep our pod healthy. One day, I'll be the matriarch of this pod. Someday, you might be too, Nora. I had no idea. It's so fun being an Orca. Were things like this for you when you were young? Things have changed a lot over the years, Nora. We had to learn how to live differently with humans around. We'll probably meet some humans while we're here. We will stay alert, but you don't have to be scared, Nora. We'll teach you about how we learn to live with humans safely, for them and us. I don't want to leave you and our family alone, but this is something I have to do. Hmm. So that video was brought to you by the incredible video vi video editing skills of Aya Walraven, uh, Otter number one. Um, and uh, those of you who were on the ship with us may recognize Ash is voice there. Um, so what another thing that we did, which was really very special to us is that um, the people we met in Norway, um, who we who weren't necessarily in the in th in in the main development team they were generous enough to lend their voices to the characters that we had in the game um so uh Ash was the orca mom her daughter um uh actually was the is the voice of nora 
her daughter Izzy and um, uh, Carol from Tennessee uh, plays a, a Zodiac um, <laughs> pilot. Um, uh, Paula is our cl- who was our uh, comb jelly. So it was a really we we tried to get as many people involved as possible, um, and uh, it was it was really made it very special for us to have um, all of our friends kind of uh, participate like that and be represented. And uh, yeah, and we're really, really very excited that we have uh, won a few awards um, and being selected for some film festivals, which has been really very um, validating and uh, cool. Do you want to go, Seth? So next, uh, yeah, yeah. So next up, we are creating something from Antarctica. And um, those of you who where they are with us might recognize some of these characters. I personally became so obsessed with penguins. I did not know that I needed a derpy darling in my life, but I <laughs> henceforth will always need a derpy darling and it is the penguin. They were super cute. Um, we, for this next anthology, we wanna make it instead of one long playthrough, just a series of different experiences you can have that teach you uh, not just like the science that we were all participating in and what that tells us about the planet, but also the different characters that you might meet, like this curious leopard seal that Lou got on a 360 video. Um, the penguins, like I said, whales, the whole shebang, the ice, the ice was beautiful. Um, and we're in the process right now of gathering all the stories and figuring out, you know, which ones we really want to feature and what instead of one main storyline carrying through like found in the fjords, kind of what lessons to draw in and how to bring a collection into a more cohesive message. And I didn't realize that was a video, so um, I just pressed play there. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, uh, we're, we're still in the process, as Tiff said, of kind of collecting stories, um, but we are, um, we like to kind of use these kind of 3D technologies also to showcase and brainstorm um, uh, our creative process. And um, so there are certain kind of web-based platforms that you can use and build environments in where people can kind of come and uh, jump in together. And there's one of such thing is uh, a platform is called Spatial. And this environment that you see um, is uh, a little thing I put together um, it, they have put together based on our, uh, one of our um, uh, Antarctica day, tr day trips. So um, those of you who were there might recognize this as Detaily Island, um, which uh, blew my mind. Like, honestly, like I, I could not I could not stop thinking about this research station and Steve the dog and go uh, the the um, the research notebooks that were empty. I was really, really, really wanted to steal them. Um, and so what will happen here was that I'm still building this out, but this is going to be a place where we are kind of um, uh, collecting and showcasing and, and kind of brainstorming some of our um, uh, stories, uh, like Detaily Island, like the um, uh, leopard seals, like the penguins, like um, the ice and uh, glacier thunder, and we're going to put some uh, sounds in here. Actually, Steve the dog does bark. I just haven't got the sound on. Um, <laughs> and uh, since there's quite a few people on the... Um, and the great thing about this is that then we can share that with other people very quickly and very immediately. Uh, so they can go and explore these spaces and kind of share in our creative process. Um, and uh, for the, because since there's so many people on the call who are actually in Antarctica, um, are there any stories that you have that you would like to see featured in our, uh, I don't know if there's a chat feature in here, but people can feel free to uh, jump in if, they, if there are any particular memories they wanna share that they wanna get immortalized in VR. That's pretty cool. I didn't get to have the experience, but I got to hear the story of the people in the Zodiac getting smacked by the whale tail. <laughs> 
Whale Frogger. <laughs> I think that was Gene and Faith that got hit with it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that was the most exciting. Yeah, I was just telling Lou about that last night that I wanted to work in the story somehow of the whale tail slap. And I was talking about our character having to dodge zodiacs and whale tails, kind of like a Frogger style game somewhere in there. No, I that was also one of my favorite memories that I didn't actually have, but I loved hearing about it. And I loved how exuberant Sally was buying shots for everyone at the bar afterwards. Yay. Oh. You got, you got slashed. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> that's that rat worthy that's really cool <laughs> uh well we we drove through some whale snots didn't we which uh you remember did, and i right, can't I remember <laughs> <laughs> oh please do share that is really cool please do share um i love that so basically different whale whale impacts physical or not <laughs> yeah so i mean with um uh, other things we are looking to kind of include uh yeah the this the ice in, in itself like um such a character um and uh uh penguin patters like the sound of them going across the the thing and how they maybe like uh, penguin skittles, although no one in North America seems to understand what, what I mean when I say skittles, but penguins having to knock things over anyway as they slide down uh, uh, mountains. Um, and um, uh, really also the story of, of the history of, of science done in the area and how thankfully that is changing, uh, not just how science is done by who, but who is doing the science and who is being allowed to answer the question, ask the questions and answer them. Um, and one of the things I was so great about our trip was uh, how many um, um, female and traditionally underrepresented scientists were on there. And um, uh, it was just really great to see that compared with the challenger, which was just, which was literally all men um, 150 years ago. So. Those kinds of changes are just really exciting to see, and we just want to we want to showcase those 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 two in in some ways. And the way the whaling ship, uh, the governor governor I can never see the governor <laughs> the, the governoran the governoran. That's it. I've Google searched it about six times today, so I should know better. Um, but all of these things, these incredible experiences we we had. Yes, the the Le Mer Channel was spectacular. There's a, definitely a reason they call it Kodiak Channel, right? Um, yes, exactly. Uh, you know, we get the, and as he said, it is it's it is easy to it is easy to add animals. We have a ridiculous amount of creative license. Um, we try to take that responsibility seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, these these conversations are really great for us to kind of get these different perspectives because we we are we're not going to lie. We are making this experience for us in part because it's a very very. Um, creatively um, nourishing experience to do it and to reflect our own experiences and put ourselves in it. But we're also making it for other people and we do like to kind of have those different perspectives in there and capture those stories. So in the future, you know, all of these wonderful people that we meet can look at it and say, oh yes, I was, I, I, I see a little bit of me in there experience and that's really very special for us um uh and then we can and then and then that makes it easier for you guys to share and we're all about amplifying impact that is our kind of core goal is to start small and find ways that we can amplify oh so 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 lou it's valerie mm -hmm. so real quick can you can you share, like, who who are you, um, uh, first of all, uh, all of this is fabulous, and, and the fact that we uh, get to relive it through this VR experience is tremendous. You know, I've, I've got all of these memories just um, bubbling at the surface, and uh, I'm, I'm a, a lot like Tip. I'm, I'm an emotional person. I'm a, I'm a touchy-feely kind of person. So 
I, I, I love witnessing all this stuff and reliving it. Um, but who are you, are, are you guys able to target? Like, um, are there school children? Is it a game that people buy? Who, who gets to see this? How are you guys sharing it with the world? So um, ba basically we have two versions. There's a 45 minute like long play experience, which is this beautiful narrative ex endeavor that you can just, you can, individuals can download and play should they have um, access to um, a, a headset. Ultimately, we'd love to get a version that you can experience like on a 2D screen uh, just to make it more accessible. But right now we don't. So we have that um, that longer version that people can download. Uh, so we currently have an itch, uh, a page called, uh, on a site called itch, uh, which kind of hosts our game. You can download it and, and stick it onto a headset if you have that technology. We've also made a short kind of 10 minute demo version, which is a bit a much more accessible version. So if you're, you don't have time to kind of get you familiar with controls and you just what you experience it, it's a little bit more directive, did a little less um, uh, choose your own adventure, but there's still those gate kind of gamey elements in there. Um, that we've built in order to get that into aquariums and science centers and museums, places which are really str struggling with like what the future looks like in terms of introducing people and exposing people to um, these incredible creatures and habitats. But, you know, with, with that social license to operate of not having these big majestic creatures kind of imprisoned in um, uh, concrete um uh enclosures so we're hoping that this um offers kind of an alternative pathway to for, for people to come in who don't have a but they might go to an aquarium and this is something that is offered as a as a um uh, an exhibition an exhibit uh, that kind of thing. So that's, we're still tidying up, like we need a little bit of an, in, for, for this one, we need a little bit of an injection of, of kind of polishing cash to kind of get it really ready. So to get rid of all the bugs. Um, but um, uh, that is kind of our plan, this short kind of 10 minute version for kind of walk-ins. It's like you come in, you play once um, and uh, uh, hosted uh, at a, a facility and then the other side is that more consumer uh, model where people will just download for us for a small fee um, and get to play it as much and often as much as as much and as often as they would like that's for front of yards for antarctica because we're doing it in the kind of like little snippet chapters we were thinking of rolling out the, the little chapters one by one as we develop them. So the whale slap story, you know, the iceberg story. And we haven't gotten to the point yet where we have figured out exactly where those could live and how they could be packaged differently. But the point is to make them more bite-sized, right? You don't have to do the whole 45 minute or even the adjunct 10 minute um, experience. You could just do like one penguin slide or whatever, get slapped by only one whale. <laughs> okay, so am I? Because I doesn't look like I am. You're using his mic. Oh, I'm using his mic. Well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I love that idea with the aquarium because I think a lot of us, uh, like here in St. Louis, we have a local aquarium that we partner with. Um, but that would be a fabulous um, avenue to take this technology, take this passion, and then share it with the masses. So I was trying to envision, I'm like, are we doing individual classrooms or how are we doing this? So um, I love the opportunity to, to try to push it to more of a, um, you know, the aquariums, and I forget how many uh, visit this our local uh, St. Louis Aquarium, right? I mean, there's a ton of uh, visitors every single day, and what a great opportunity to push all of these, the, the, you know, our experience. This is, this is the, what we've got to experience this February, right, in 2024 uh, to those, um, to those uh, organizations. So Cindy, uh, who is on our trip, uh, she's asking, are you guys funded? How, how, where is the money coming from? How are you guys doing all of this? 
It comes from sheer joy. No, so um, yeah, so we're we're entirely self-funded. We won a bit of prize money from the UN competition, um, but uh, beyond that, it's it was um, a, a total labor of love, and some might say utter idiocy. Um, uh, as I basically spent six months of my life, <laughs> I gradually spending my savings to build it. Um, and um uh but yeah we're we're at a place now where we we have a we're kind of getting a little bit of momentum and hopefully some avenues for funding are um are opening up and um uh this i'm hoping this so this the slide that you can see now um um we're kind of looking at some other ways that we can use this technology in the dive uh dive space um so less not just these kind of narrative experiences, but um, also um, uh, for dive training um, and um, uh, kind of more um, technical simulations. Uh, so um, what VR and water both do in a great way is kind of allow us to defy gravity um, and uh, with, with buoyancy and camera trickery. Uh, so, um, I have been working on um, a, a, basically a, a, a rig and a set of simulations that allow you to kind of mimic this. So this is a very early thing, kind of a proof of concept. Um, and I am actually, normally you have to, um, let me get rid of some sound there. Normally you have to um, move with controllers or your hands, but advances in the technology mean that um, you can actually, play around with that and you can see on my left ankle there I've actually attached a controller to my foot so I, I am actually moving with my feet as if I'm kicking and you'll see in a second that I can also do things with my hands because the, the VR headset is picking up my hand movements so this is a really intuitive um, um, way of um, actually recreating the dive experience underwater now the physicality me lying on my bench is not the future goal of this um but <laughs> it's, it's all, all that i have right now um but and the view unfortunately you can't really see the movement quite as well on this video but trust me in the headset it's really cool and uh you can like i have this like fake bc where I, you know you can deflate and inflate to go up and down so i'm kind of still playing with that but the idea here this would be a much more like for you know your dive shops and your your paddies and and things to kind of help enhance their training um, and to, to kind of learn some kind of technical things and get used to some of the proprioception without being in an area where, you know, you can't breathe. Um, and um, uh, so we're, I'm kind of working on this as a hope as be, becoming an additional revenue stream us by helps us build the good stuff and um so i'm also a paraglider and work with um, um uh, and know quite a few people who are in the hand gliding community and a friend of mine is going to help me kind of construct some kind of rig that is kind of neutrally buoyant um so that you can and this is like i apologize for my terrible drawing skills but this is like <laughs> little sketch of what i want to build um, and um, so uh, it, with some very subtle movements, you can change the angle of your body um, to, to really um, um, uh, track where you are in space um, and, and really engage the full physicality of diving while do, experiencing that, that simulation. Um, the, the name of this that I'm super proud of, but it only works if you don't have a North American accent, is SCUVA. Um, uh, self-contained underwater virtual reality um, and it is uh, it is I'm going to I'm hoping will be a revolutionary form new addition to VR uh, simulation uh, to scuba diving simulation and um, I look forward to uh, sharing more of that as it evolves but that's kind of in our future and hopefully that kind of more commercial product that can help us um uh, do some of that more emotional stuff that we want to do uh with the narratives that we want to tell um well 
I think, uh, I'm, I think I'm still alive, and uh, I just want to tell you that your drawing is very cool. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited for you guys. I mean, uh, truly. I mean, I think that there's uh, all kinds of opportunity with this technology and the passion that goes behind it. And as, uh, you know, of course, my business is, um, is, a, is a trainer, um, I want to... I want to build ambassadors to the ocean, right? I, that's who I want to. I want to have at the store. So for me, this is a this is a great segue. This is a, the ability to attract uh, people that might not otherwise uh, have the just like you're talking about have the um, you know the privilege of being able to go to some of these destinations. So um, and I and I would think that the folks that are online with me tonight. Um, we we want to we want to be a part of the solution, right? So we want to help you guys uh, uh, share the technology and figure out uh, a way to make this inv available to others. Um, yeah, exactly. So like Cindy said, we could use something like this. You know, if you're talking about trying to create a retail uh, or a money making uh, avenue. Uh, all dive shops could have something virtual, re, you know, virtual reality related that allows uh, an individual to come into the store instead of having to jump into a pool. Maybe we put a headset on them and let them experience that pure joy, um, and and uh, you know, and take it from there. So, you know, I love these conversations. This is the stuff that that really excited me about this trip. Not only. Not only the cute penguins agreed a hundred percent. There's I wanted to stuff one into into my my vest and bring it home, but also the the ability to um, to share this right. I mean, how humbling is it to be able to go to these destinations? I I just I can't. I, I want to share. I want to talk about it. I want to I want to bring that experience to everybody. And I think virtual reality, what you guys are doing, what you guys are experimenting with, and you're and you're doing it on a shoestring budget right are trying to do is what we th those are the kind of solutions that we want to be supporting so um we if there's ways in which we can do that you need to let us know uh we want to share that with our our group of divers and 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 uh in, include us in the conversation right include us because we want to we feel exactly like you do we're passionate we're excited and uh we're, we're looking at this and we're like yes this is awesome. So, um, yeah. So tell us, uh, so I mean, looking would... forward. So talk, talk a little bit about looking forward. What, what, what are you guys doing next? So this is, this is also an, a little underwater environment that uh, is based on Norway here, the little screenshot of here. So one of the other things we're looking into is, so we talked a lot about um, uh, underwater echoes, right? Like these echoes of these experiences and providing this place this space for people to come together and share and remember. And so we want, we, so Tiff is the co-founder with Ash, who those of you who are on the trip will know yes. of, um, of um, a nonprofit called the Seabirds. Um, and I'm going to ask her to talk about it about that in more detail in a second. But one of the things we're, we're kind of supporting from a VR perspective um, uh, through Three Otters Media and my kind of uh, company, uh, Blue Shift Immersive, um, is building like these underwater campuses, these environments that we can explore. Not So our games prior to that, like our, our single player, you are there and you're, oh, which has its own value, but also places where we can, multiple people can be at the same time, just as we are together on this call. From all across the globe, we can come and we can feel like we're in the same place and having sharing that experience. So these underwater campuses and, and environments that are based on um, our experiences um, are part of that kind of uh, plan moving forward, um, uh, as well as these emotional narrative games that kind of is our bread and butter, as Tom, um, and um, uh, this just kind of those more technical 60 degree videos, that real life like stuff um, and the simulations that I was talking about. But I do want to give an opportunity to um, uh, Tiff to kind of do a bit of a plug for Seabirds too, because that we align so much, and um, that everything is kind of <laughs> intertwined. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Lou. Um, so Seabirds, Ashley and I formed right after Antarctica, and we are an all-women's expedition team that made up of non-traditional explorers. So moms, teachers, people like me, like ex-lawyers who just like love the water, people <laughs> who like to just wear shark costumes, the whole shebang. Um, non-scientists who want to engage with the ocean and with ways, tangible, actionable ways to fight for it, to protect it, hopefully to save it. And we utilize citizen science just like we did Tiff, we just lost you. You froze. Oh no, that happened to her earlier. <laughs> Technology. Isn't she good? At, isn't she good at standing still? <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh, she's back. Here she goes. Yeah, she's back. All right, Tiffany, you're back. You guys. Yeah. Okay, good. Back. Sorry, I'm like in a weird remote place. Um, so I don't know how much you heard. Basically, we bring non scientists into the kind of ocean science world and we help them feel for me the most important thing agency like they feel like they can do something they can understand ocean acidification or how climate relates to the oceans or you know changing currents whatever and they can do something about it so we're using citizen science and we have this all women's expedition team that goes out we are going to actually be on that same trip with you, Valerie, to Spitsbergen. So that should be awesome. We would love to have you and your divers help us with the citizen science. Um, we need it all hands on deck. And then we're going to, we, our bread and butter is Zooming with classrooms from the field so that they can ask us questions and they can see that people that look like their mom or who might actually be their mom and their teachers and everything are explorers too, right? We're trying to redefine the narrative of who gets to be there who who rightfully gets to answer the questions who gets to show up there and i'll just share like my favorite story when we did this uh, uh when we zoomed with a classroom from antarctica we had a kid because we said we wear dry suits to go on land we wear special boots we clean off all that and they were like um where do you use the restroom oh. and we were like oh we don't and that was like all the kids were like what do you mean and we're like there's no facility there's no building there's no people and they're like what do you mean there's no people so it's just a really fun way to engage the next generation right and get them to be like oh my god there's a place at the bottom of the planet with penguins and no people and my mom went there you know it's it's amazing it's been so fun and we look forward to doing it again in the arctic with any of you that might be there and then i just wanted to add a little um thing you said Valerie about how you guys might be able to help like we would love any connections like if you have that aquarium person if you think they might be interested we'd love to hear that we'd love to get in touch and then if you guys know people who um, are interested in funding weird VR things please throw them our way like we love people who want to fund fun weird interesting endeavors yeah um, absolutely yes. I mean oh. Sorry, I was gonna say, um, I mean, yeah, rely on us to help you promote things um, because I know just my experience since I've become a diver, um, you know, when I get back from trips, people are very interested and because of the pictures I take and what they see in my stories, others have become divers, you know, and me never say, I said I would never dive cold water, never be in a dry suit, and here I was in Antarctica, That's right. you know, and it was just an amazing experience, and it's it's really making people see that it is an opportunity, and then for those that don't want to dive, or they, they want to know what's underneath, I think the VR would be absolutely incredible, so they can see what I've seen, you know, and it not just be a still picture or like a very short video as they're actually interacting and feeling like they're there. So yeah, let us know what we can do to help promote that. Um, if you have any kind of crowdfunding um, or if you need somebody to do some crowdfunding, I've got a friend who has, uh, he's like a programmer for a platform for one of those or something. Um, so yeah, whatever we can do to help promote this and get you guys some funding to, to escalate this. Because I think it would be really fun, not just for kids, but for adults. Like I said, for those of them who are like, oh, I've never dived. But maybe if they see it, you start to get that, um, you know, excitement about it. Because I never wanted to be underwater to begin with. <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. 
you know, eight years later, diving all over the place, including Antarctica and Arctic next year. So, you know, sometimes you just have to see it's tangible, you know, and, and something obtainable and not like, oh, this person who's on TV does this stuff. No, it's actually there. And people get really excited. And now I've got other people who, even if they're not diving, I, I tell them all the time that Val has non-diver rates for her trips. You don't have to be a diver to go on them. And you can still experience it and, and hear the stories of what was underwater. But I think us diving, we missed out on a lot of stuff that was above water. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, let us know what we can do to help. If you have a link, if you have something else, if there's just information or a website to go to, we can certainly promote that in our social media and just in who we talk to. We can... And I think back. <laughs> yeah, and I'm back. Um, uh, it occasionally dips out. Um, and yeah, so and another thing that you guys will be really good for is as this as kind of the for the dive simulator and as we bring more things online is as testers and consultants, right? Like because you guys have this real life experience. And as we're trying to like actually recreate this as best we can virtually, the people who are gonna give us that feedback and help us design that are the people who spend the most time in the water and um, have these different perspectives. Because for me as someone getting back, just getting back to it after a long time out of the water, like. I'm definitely this new diver perspective, which is like, okay, how can I design something that kind of helps me deal with my random anxieties of not being able to communicate underwater and get someone's attention? Um, and um, um, that feeling of, of going, uh, those kinds of things that I'm struggling with, it's like, oh, this would be, to be able to get some of this muscle memory down before I'm in that situation where I have to, where there's other things going on, like this, in terms of this bridging between the theory and the full on, like I know we have um, uh, swimming pools and things, but you know, you don't have to navigate around a swimming pool, you know, right, it's right. got, it's, it's so, so kind of that situational awareness and all of these things that they, like, it, it just gives that really interesting bridge. Um, and, um, but I, that's, those are kind of the things that I notice because of where I am at my diving. But if we want to do something like, well, how do we get someone who to have just like to start doing confined space diving, like and wreck diving and cave diving and things and like, and the, having that kind of um, spatial awareness is, is a different set of skills, right? Like in a different set of concerns that I'm not aware of, that, that those of you who have uh, are experts in that are gonna be able to provide that expertise. So if, you're, if you guys are willing to kind of be part of that process as well, that would be huge. It's a little ways off, but huge. I can tell you, Lou, I have not talked to any of my folks, but I already know uh, they would love that opportunity. So um, I, I know that everybody's excited to, um, this for us, right? This is an opportunity to share, kind of like you guys, what we're passionate about. And, and to, you know, if we get a technical person like you, who is able to translate that for all intents and purposes from you know just a feeling or in sensation and you're able to put us in that environment in a virtual reality mode, um, yeah, we're all in. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited about the work you guys are doing. I think we're excited about participating. Um, any ways that we can join the as just individuals, right? It's very hard when when it's such a massive problem, um, you know, the oceans, the, in, in the environment, the um, um, the warming of, of the of the world. Uh, how do we, as individuals, participate in the solution? And so I think the three otters media is giving us an opportunity to be part of the solution. And that's what I want to bring. I want to bring those positive opportunities to to uh, our customers, our travelers, right, and all our experiences. Um, and we're we are so excited for you, ladies. We really are. There's a few of us that will be joining um, DEMA, so we look forward to seeing you guys uh, at Blue Green Expeditions booth. 
We look forward to visiting both with uh, both of you guys uh, or, or whoever is able to join us there at DEMA, right? But more importantly, uh, we're excited about bringing uh, what you guys are doing um, and, um, and, and your, your passion um, to the general public. So DEMA is just for, you know, dive professionals in just a small little area. Uh, we're excited about helping you guys broaden the space a little bit, right? Uh, adding, adding a little bit of the dollars, adding a little bit of the passion. Uh, we've, got, we've, got, um, we've got the folks that want to be, to participate. So um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I know we've got quite a few people that have joined us here uh, at the late hour. Um, does anybody have any questions for either Tiff or Lou about uh, what the project that they're working on? <laughs> Melody, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> that, those are my people, ladies, right there. Sign me up, I tell you. Yeah, I'm excited to bring them. <laughs> Val takes all my money. <laughs> We're happy to take some more. No, <laughs> I am also a very nerdy science person, so this is the stuff that I really love, and I love when other people get excited, excited about science and get people who aren't really interested in it starting to get them interested in it and really connecting to it so well once again i think that from my perspective the the blue green expeditions trips this is what i tell faith is is that um you know you, you have such a connection with uh with with solutions and scientists and and then just being in that room I, that's what i loved about the arctic trip the antarctica trip was just being in this room with like-minded individuals uh the scientists the the um the audio visual folks right i loved i loved walking on the on the um the snow pack and the ice and then having you guys with the sound uh, that for some reason really impact it was very impactful for me i'm like yes yes you can't forget that sound and that sensation and and uh, you guys were incorporating that into your visual reality programming i i just love that part but um joining those um uh, being surrounded by like-minded individuals and all their different passion projects was truly the highlight for me of the entire experience. Not to mention, of course, the cute little penguins and 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 uh, and the whale slapping slapping uh, Jean in the head. That was delightful. Uh, but just the joy of getting to to meet so many uh, individuals and and uh, learning about their projects. Um, does anybody have any questions? I interrupted. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to have you guys. So <laughs> excited to be here. Yes, yes. Do we have any others that want to comment real quick? We've they got answered the questions so far. They're in the chat. So they yeah. uh, answered all the questions so yep. far. Yep. So. Hey, Valerie. Yes. Valerie, I've got a question for you. There's a lot of links that are being dropped in the chat. Are you? Do you get to have that save that chat saved on your side? Because I know when this meeting ends, I don't know that I can access that chat anymore. We'll, we'll we have this recorded, try. and I will try to get the uh, transcript from the chat. But we are definitely recording this video, and when we post it on Facebook, I'll try to get all those links on the Facebook post. Yeah, we okay, can perfect. also follow up with we'll with, the with them in an all easier <laughs> way. Yes, yeah. so um, uh, we'll we'll send our, all our contacts, all of the websites, the link to download the um, um, the experience. Um, so currently, the one that's on there because the full experience is a bit buggy right now for me to trust it with the public. Um, uh, the demo version is available for free downloads on our itch page that I link there, and we'll provide. Uh, uh, links to it and please provide like comments if you do it does require so if you have it's built for the quest 2 or 3 headset um, if you have access to that it does uh, require some steps because it's not available on the on the the meta store but all of those steps that are required to download it are also on that website so you have everything that you need there but uh, there is no charge um as long as they have an it an it savvy person who's willing to go through some steps to get it on the headset um uh, it's it is free play for um uh, anybody who is committed enough to do it to, to play it i love it Love it. And I'll, other than I'll, that, I'll, you can just come and. Other than that, you can find us at Dima. We'll be carrying around at least two headsets, and uh, you can uh, pop in, and uh, uh, we'll find a quiet spot for you to to play and have some fun. Excellent, excellent. 
All right. So uh, a shameless plug, I must add, by the way, um, and I don't know the exact date, uh, but next month, as part of our speaker series, we will be featuring the Seabirds. <laughs> so uh, Tiff and Ash will be joining us next month in November. 13th. The, uh, November, thank you. I was hoping somebody was grabbing the phone. November 13th, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, Tiff and Ash will be uh, uh, doing a presentation for, as part of our speaker series, to talk about the Seabirds. Um, Ash is, uh, is a, also um, has a lot to share, right? And a lot to bring to the equation. And I'm excited, so excited to, to uh, introduce everyone to her as well. Those that have been on the uh, Antarctica trip, you already know what a delight. Um, so it, it'll be, um, please join us in November. It's a month to be thankful and it's gonna be a, a great presentation. I'm looking forward to hearing all about the seabirds. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank both Tiff and Lou um, and then um, for joining us tonight as members of Three Otters Media. Uh, I, again, I, I just, uh, I, for, I'm very humbled by the opportunity to explore uh, both Antarctica and the Arctic. I do feel like uh, Faith Ortons with Blue Green Expedition was instrumental in bringing all of us together. Um, and uh, I am excited to share uh, all the people that I've gotten to meet along the way with you, these two ladies um, and their organization is part of it. Thank you for sharing the wonderful world of virtual reality. We look forward to exploring more and helping you guys promote it to, the, um, to our fellow divers. Um, yes, so uh, without further ado, Please join me in giving these guys a big round of applause. We thank you both for joining us tonight. Yay, let's go diving. That's exactly right. Or snorkeling. I'm all about it, right? We want to do, we want to give it an opportunity to everybody. So uh, thank you. Unless guys. Dive, yeah. Yeah, see, even, uh, even our rusty divers, right? Come on, Lou, we'll get you back up to speed. No worries at all. Tiff's taking me diving in Florida in a few weeks. I'm so pumped. I'm glad it's in a few weeks. We got to let things die down a little bit. Again, yeah. let's pray for our Floridians, please. Let's give them a yeah. yeah. Let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers. All right. Yeah, there's a there's a few from the trip who are in the uh, yes. in the really in the path of it. So amen. We've got uh, lots of family and friends, and so uh, we're keeping them in our hearts tonight. So uh, absolutely. All right, ladies, without further ado, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Thank you for everything. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Bye. Good night. Thank you.